Day 263 of the Trump administration brings us reports of White House staff members who want out, a Trump loyalist who says this presidency could be doomed, and a Republican senator saying Trump has put us on a path to World War III. And that was the big fight the president found himself in this weekend with Tennessee Republican Senator Bob Corker, chairman of Senate Foreign Relations, who is not notably running for re-election. In an interview with the New York Times, he said this about the president. He concerns me. He would have to concern anyone who cares about our nation. I know for a fact that every single day at the White House, it's a situation of trying to contain him. Except for a few people, the vast majority of our caucus understands what we're dealing with here. Of course, they understand the volatility that we're dealing with and the tremendous amount of work that it takes by people around him to keep him in the middle of the road. All that came after Corker responded to a Trump Twitter tirade against him by saying, quote, it's a shame the White House has become an adult daycare center. Someone obviously missed their shift this morning. Where Corker is concerned, this has been building for some time, and we have watched him struggle when describing this president. I do think there need to be some radical changes. Um, The president has not yet um, has not yet been able to demonstrate the stability uh, nor some of the competence that he needs to demonstrate in order to be successful. I chose the words. Uh, I stand by those words. Uh, when I met with the president a week ago Friday, I said, "Mr. President, I stand by what I said." Secretary Tillerson, Secretary Mattis, and uh, Chief of Staff Kelly. Uh, are those people that help separate our country from chaos. And about the fight with Corker and similar battles the president has been in, the Washington Post spoke to 18 people in the White House, outside advisors included, and other Trump associates who said the president is increasingly isolated. Quote, one Trump loyalist noting that Corker has many more friends in the Senate than Trump said the rift could dash chances for tax reform and other meaningful legislation. His presidency could be doomed, said this person. Here's another one Trump confidant likened the president to a whistling teapot, saying that when he does not blow off steam, he can turn into a pressure cooker and explode. I think we are in pressure cooker territory, said this person who, you know the rest, requested anonymity to speak candidly. And the Axios News Service reporting tonight, this stress does not stop with the president at the White House. They write, quote, we cannot stress enough how many essential staff and officials want out. If not this quarter, then soon after the new year. We also got a glimpse tonight of something else, this rapidly escalating war on incumbents in the Republican Party, not all but some, and it's under the banner of the Trump movement. Steve Bannon appeared on Sean Hannity's show tonight on Fox News. He warned establishment Republicans, nobody is safe, we're coming for you. And here was the exchange with the host. I've been told by people in the room, Ben Sass, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, uh, Corker, and even McConnell, they trash the president, but yet they can't get any of their promises completed. I've, they are the swamp. Republicans are weak and pathetic, and they're lacking in identity, and the forgotten men and women that voted this election are being let down. Look, they, hold to they have total contempt for the forgotten man. They have total contempt for the base. That's what you saw in Alabama. In Alabama, where they came in with uh, Luther Strange with $32 million to destroy Judge Moore, you saw what the base thought of them, right? The base totally rejected them. them. These people have no respect for the working men and women in the United States. And I tell you what, Senator Corker is an absolute disgrace. If Bob Corker has any honor any decency, he should resign immediately. He should not let those words stand away. He said about the he president, nobody's safe. We're coming after all of them, and we're going to win.
Those were important words and they made news tonight. Interesting exchange. With that, let's turn to our lead off panel for this evening. Peter Baker, Chief White House Correspondent for the New York Times and an MSNBC political analyst. Kimberly Atkins, Chief Washington Reporter for the Boston Herald and Jeremy Peters, New York Times political reporter and an MSNBC contributor. Uh, Peter, let's begin not with that last bit we heard. We'll get to Mr. Bannon. Uh, but based on your writing tonight, why is this fight with Corker particularly bad timing for the president, not that any time is good to take on the chairman of Senate Foreign Relations, a member of your own party. Well, exactly. Bob Corker is not just an average uh, Republican senator, and he's not one of the ones who's been a renegade up until now on some of these health care votes. When the president has been trying desperately to get to 51 votes for some of these big, big pieces of legislation, the ones he's been courting, the ones he's been losing have been John McCain, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski. Now add... Uh, Bob Corker to the list of people he no longer can count on, people who are free agents. Bob Corker, as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, has a lot to do with, uh, obviously, the appointment power and the, uh, if there is a new Secretary of State, if Rex Tillerson is put out, he has a lot to do with this Iran nuclear deal. If the president later this week decertifies it, as we're told he's going to do, and he's a deficit hawk going way back, and he could be very important just next week when the Senate is scheduled to take up a budget vote that is critical to their tax cut plan. Uh, Kimberly, I have described Senator Corker on this broadcast as a workhorse and not a show horse, a man not normally given to hyperbole. So having, having said that, what do you think is in it for him? Do you think he views this as a straight up act of patriotism? Well, what did Janis Joplin say? Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Since he announced that he is not running for re-election, uh, he has a lot more freedom to speak very frankly uh, about how he sees this White House. And you're right. This is somebody who doesn't uh, uh, spout off. Uh, this is somebody who chooses his words carefully. It's also someone who supported Donald Trump. Um, he's not a never Trump person. Uh, and so having this, uh, he's, he's expressing, uh, he's taking on the, the, the responsibility of, re of expressing what he's hearing in the Republican caucus, sort of giving cover to the other people who are running for reelection and who can't speak as freely uh, about this president. So that's what makes it extraordinary. It's also, he's also someone who's very well respected. I mean, you made the point that he has a lot more friends in uh, the Republican uh, caucus than the president does right now. Nice. And so taking that position, uh, he's really, you know, using that freedom that he has now that he's not running for re-election to, to really uh, speak on their behalf. Nice job on Bobby McGee, by the way. Uh, hey, Jeremy, what's the <laughs> ratio of Republicans who agree with Corker yet refuse to say so? 100 to 1, 200 to 1, uh, 300 to 1. And has there been any migration in any of their, has courage broken out in any perceptible way in the last 36 hours? No, not among <laughs> Brian, Republicans who are running for re-election. I mean, th th there's a handful who have always kind of been willing to criticize the president. But for the most part, the ones that you've seen who have really come out hard against him are, are, are people like Bob Corker, who are unencumbered by having to, to uh, unencumbered by, by, by the bonds of, 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 of re-election. And you have people like John McCain, who, uh, who have always kind of been out there uh, against him. And, and it's not clear to to me that anything short of a, a, a total implosion by President Trump, a realization among Republicans that he offers them no more political power will cause them to, to, to break with him. They have to see among their base, among their voters, that President Trump is no longer popular. And right now, that's just not the case. Among the Trump supporters who were with Trump in the primary, 95% of them still approve of the job that Trump is doing, according to the latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. And, and that's uh, what Republicans are seeing back in their districts, back in their home states, when they take into consideration, OK, is it time for me to criticize the president yet? Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.